Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Chris Alicia, AKA Chris, and welcome to my channel. So, if you're anything like me, you are an intense homebody who has to literally force themselves to get up off the couch and go outside and get some sun and any vitamin boost the sun gives you to get you going through the day. So what I wanted to do was to motivate myself to go outside for 21 days, hopefully form a habit of just reading outside and using some space in my day to kind of clear my head, focus on nothing else except myself, the book I'm reading, and just being with nature. So let's just hop into me recounting my daily experience for the next 21 days. Hey everybody, welcome to day one of reading outside. So I actually just went for a two and a half minute walk. The weather is actually beautiful outside, so I thought I would just bring out our camper chair and park it in our little back patio area. So today I'm gonna start reading Oh, How to Ride. I'm gonna have all the volumes here at the house. I borrowed them from my library. So I thought that, you know, it's still the end of spring, so might as well read about a blue spring. So I'm gonna set my phone timer to 30 minutes and I'll check in with you when I'm done for today. Made it through two volumes. Um, so this is volume one and volume two. Um, really love it so far. I love the anime. I was out in the sun, moved to the shade because it is hot as balls outside, but yeah, catch you tomorrow. Good morning, it is day two of this journey i look really rough and that's because i literally woke up and came out here to read because i work today so i don't think i would have had time later but i read the next two volumes in the series i read for about an hour and it's been a great time I'll catch you tomorrow sup so apologies in advance if you can hear cars i'm obviously outside i read this morning for about an hour but forgot to record anything so this is just my daily check-in i read the next two volumes of Ao how to ride um it is officially outside of anime territory it's very interesting um it's gotten so much darker so much more emotional angst is at an all-time high and i am living for it but to prove that i actually read outside um i am here at my bus stop which i usually read at i read on the bus um, and while I wait for the bus, and I will be continuing to read the memory, please. Um, I'm reading this for the JoJo's Bazaar Reading Adventure Challenge, so you will get an update about that. Not in this video, um, but here's me outside. Hi, hello. I got sunburned two days ago, so I'm still kind of hiding from the sun. So the fact that it's a little overcast actually works out for me. But I'll check in with you tomorrow okay i look rough right now i don't really care so i've only been doing this for like four days and this is already my favorite part of the day like waking up rolling out of bed picking up a book and just reading outside like i get what people mean about like being outside in natural air just like boosts the mental and the happiness and everything like i get it i get it science is on to something this morning i read three volumes so i was feeling frisky you know all very good some parts i truly hate and wish was not even mentioned but for the most part really really love it i am this is officially a toma san account and it has always been a combinado san account because they're undisputably the best boys no contest it is day five and i am truly in my no thoughts just feels just tears era and i'm happy to be here i finished the last four volumes of i will have to ride and like I, I'm emotional. I don't, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I love them. I just love them. I can give a better review when my brain is working again. I adore them. Like it is cold as fuck outside, but my heart is warm. Love them. Hi, this is Crystal from the future. And by future, I mean like literally four days in the future. Cause I forgot to give my final thoughts on Oh, how to ride. I just said, I finished. Haha. -ha. I'll do tomorrow. I'm doing like a full manga Monday of Oh, how to ride um, to give you like more background, like an overview and a full on review. But just so you have my thoughts, I loved it. I thought it was a really interesting story about like grief and people changing and accepting that people change, allowing people the space to do that in a healthy way. It's overall just like a nice high school little drama romance antsy thing. There were some parts I didn't like. I mentioned it before. Actually, I don't know if I mentioned, I don't like age gap 
anything and one of the characters Shuko had like a crush on the teacher and was behaving actually really inappropriately and eventually like realized she was being inappropriate but he also kind of led her on which made me really uncomfortable so for that reason I will never like his character even though he's supposed to be like this really nice guy I don't like it but them aside I really like the story I really like the development between Futaba and Ko. Like Ko was going through a lot of stuff, like dealing with his mom's death. I'm trying to support like a friend who is dealing with her dad's death and like kind of being disowned by her family, but also realizing like it's okay to grieve, like you need to let yourself grieve. And I think he realized he never really let himself grieve after his mom died. So he was clinging on to this person that was going through the same thing as him as a means to kind of still hold on to not having to grieve really so i think his storyline was super duper interesting i like a good slow burn i don't like immediate like we're together there were some parts that i'm like oh this is getting a little convoluted this is being extra for no reason i mean a lot of times that's how children manga goes communication got better throughout it it was cute i don't know if any of this is coherent i really did like it like i don't want it to seem like i didn't enjoy it i really really did enjoy the manga overall i really enjoyed the show like i think the art was so beautiful if you watch the anime like anytime they went into the past they had like this watercolor filter on it and they kind of kept pieces of that in the manga but mainly like when Ko and Futaba were actually like reconnecting and stuff none of this is coherent but that's fine it's fine liked it we'll give that like 4.5 out of 5 4.75 out of 5 4.5 out of 5 that's gonna change we'll see watch my full review to actually see what I rate this good morning so it is officially day six and today was the first day it actually occurred to me that i could read the books that i'm reading for another challenge for this video but i'm simply just not i don't know in my head they're just like two different entities but it also feels like it helps me compartmentalize the books like they're in different like this is my morning book and this is like my every other time of the day book and then this is my nighttime book does anyone else do that? Am I tripping? I could very well be tripping, but that's neither here nor there. Anywho, since I finished Oh How to Ride yesterday, I started reading this beauty, Just Your Local Bisexual Disaster. And it's really good so far. I'm like two chapters in, really enjoying it. I can tell you absolutely nothing about it really, except it's like about uh, this girl and just having like, I feel like a crush on everyone, which like, I get it, relatable. I too was in high school and I feel that deeply, um, but yeah, it's good. Uh, there's a character that reminds me of my toxic ex, which we love. Good stuff, good morning. Kind of living for this part of my day. It's like one of my favorite things to do now. Had my little cup of tea, which is now empty. And if anyone cares, it was orange black tea, some blue agave, nettle leaf powder, and ginger root powder. Delicious. I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's day seven, whatever. Um, about 85 pages into this, I have thoughts. I have many thoughts. So basically, we're following our main character, Maggie. It's basically this entire thing of she's trying to figure out who she wants her date to um, her little sister's quince to be. And it's between three people, most of which I don't like. One is her ex-boyfriend who is hella toxic and I page from like chapter two. Um, and apparently he continues to be toxic um, or there's more backstory to that. Not feeling him, don't want it to be that. The other one is her best friend. So I've never said this before, or I've talked to somebody about whatever. I hate, hate, hate the best friends to lovers trope for multiple reasons. One is because I feel like why I hate, mm, like let people be friends. Like it's okay to be friends. Like sometimes, yeah, it works out, whatever, whatever. But I'm just like, I feel like there's still so much value in having a best friend confidant that doesn't need to be your partner like just stay friends but also I'd probably be more into it eh, no I wouldn't have let me not lie but her friend is also hella toxic like she's super possessive like she doesn't like Matthew and that's like she doesn't like her ex whose name's Matthew which seems to have very good reason for that but also like the next love interest danny just shows up and like is good vibes or whatever like she's just a new girl in the town and as soon as our main character maggie even looks at danny amanda's like oh i'm here like don't forget about me and i'm just like relax relax you're being a very toxic friend 
your friend is allowed to have other friends let's start there i don't know can't fucking stand her can't fucking stand her and then last but not least is danny who i think she's gonna end up with which i'm not mad about she seems like good vibes like it seems like her and maggie are main character would vibe well so i feel like they're probably gonna be end game which is fine or like it could be a complete surprise that she ends up with jordan who's her guy best friend who knows i don't know as long as it's not matthew or amanda i'm fine because currently i both abs i absolutely hate both of them with a passion also she needs to let her sister know who her date is the week before the quince and i'm just like is that enough time to make alterations to a fit but who am i to ask i never had one whatever catch you tomorrow good morning it is day seven day eight it's day eight wow time's not real it's fine still reading this bad boy i don't know if i explained this but i am reading books specifically during this time that i'm only reading during this time which is kind of silly considering i'm also trying to read like a lot of other books but it's okay don't compartmentalization doing it for the brain yeah about a third of the way through this book she's gonna pick danny i just i need her to acknowledge that danny is throwing hints that she's into her one amanda has confirmed she's straight that's two and is also in a relationship very toxic one so whatever matthew is also in a relationship also very toxic like it's a no-brainer i don't know why we're entertaining this but you know it is regular teen thing where oh i don't know if they like me i don't know i shouldn't force a relationship i they don't want a relationship i can't do it. bro neither do the other two or maybe not neither do the other two but the other two are already in relationships what are we talking about i'm bitching right now but i actually do still enjoy this like when i want like ya just for uh, just a good time ya not something that i'm gonna be like oh my heart this is this is what i want this is what I want. This also had me thinking about uh, the fact that every time I read a book and they talk about like these wild high school parties, I think about how deprived I was by my high school experience and the lack of like socialization in a way that I wanted. But that's for another time. I wish I had a better time in high school. If you know me from high school and you're watching this, just know I had a terrible time. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning. My hair is actually washed and done a concept. Um, ignore my very red face. I went for like a walk yesterday and it was a lot hotter because it said it's overcast, but I got severely sunburned. But we're not going to talk about that. It's fine. So I am over halfway through this book. And so I guess to update you, our girl Maggie had her three little love interests. Matthew's officially out of the picture. Thank God um, he was trash. But like they decided to be friends cool whatever i know initially i said i don't like amanda and like she's still not my favorite person but i think it's kind of interesting trying to toe the line between like what is considered romantic affection and what is considered like platonic affection or just like how being affectionate can be misconstrued for like romantic affection i don't know if any of this is making sense but i guess like there people are starting to pick up on how affectionate um, Amanda is with Maggie. Um, I still don't think they're gonna end up together in the end. Maybe Amanda is developing feelings if she doesn't realize it. Maybe uh, she is realizing like, maybe I could be into girls. I also don't know if it's just because her and her boyfriend Jaime are having so many issues that she's like clinging on to Maggie extra and being extra affectionate because maybe she's not getting that in her relationship. I don't know, there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah, Amanda is a conundrum to me right now danny's still great i still think she's gonna end up with maggie in the end and i think it's probably the healthiest choice also her sister keeps saying like let me know who your date is i'm like don't give me a deadline if you're gonna keep telling me that i need to let you know asap like you give me a deadline respect your own deadline even though your deadline didn't make sense which i said like when i first started reading the book but it's fine we're at day nine i should have started with that whatever good morning though <laughs> all right i'll catch you tomorrow good morning it's a day not sure which one but the screen will tell you because i surely will not um i am like two-thirds of the way through this bad boy i think she's finally realizing that danny's the one um she finally talked to amanda about like the mixed signals that she was giving her and her and amanda are in the middle of a fight now i can like see both sides because like i get apparently after maggie came out amanda had been like more touchy-feely with her 
and it was like sending her mixed signals which i'm like valid but she never talked to amanda about it so amanda asked to like kiss her because she's never kissed a girl which obviously like whatever but you know maggie's like i mean i didn't know i was bi until i kissed a girl and like that confirmed it so like maybe this will be the thing but i'm like amanda's still in a relationship before she kissed you she said it didn't mean anything and then you kissed which you consented to and then later on she sees amanda with jaime which again maggie knew she was still in a relationship with and then kind of stormed off and got upset basically saying like amanda you're giving me mixed signals which again i understand however comma like say something if this is your best friend like say something i know you like her but especially if you like her i think it's important for you to clarify like hey you know you're doing this is there something like you want to talk about are you questioning something i think in the long run it probably would have helped maggie out a little bit more if she said something sooner rather than later because now her and amanda are in like a really bad fight and oh i feel weird because i feel like i can't fully fault amanda for it because she thought she was like just confiding in her best friend and maggie never said anything but maggie never said anything because she liked her like she likes amanda so like i guess part of it's like why would i say anything because right now i'm liking the attention and like i want this to be more but then if it's not what it want what i want it to be like maybe i just stay quiet because i don't want to lose this i don't know we'll see how it keeps going but i'm at page 214 and i don't have my glasses on so i actually can't see how the book ends so i promise i won't spoil it for myself that's acknowledgement i just saw what happens at the end haha but i have like a little over 100 pages left um so i'll check back in tomorrow I'll let y'all know how it's going good morning funnily enough it is 7 15 i have another early day <sighs> i'm not a morning person um i have another early day and i was like you know what let me stay sleeping longer it's gonna be fine i'll just read when i get home we have um an excessive heat warning and it's gonna be a high of like 96 today around the time i would get home and, and read because the point is to do this like in the daytime in the daylight you know hear the birds and shit wasn't doing that i said i'd rather wake up at six and read than be outside in the heat because i have been sunburned for the last week here is what like ugh, you can't see my messed up tan lines they're bad right now they're bad it's fine it's fine it's not fine but it's fine almost done with this bad boy honestly i might just finish it in the morning i am at 248 and there are about 100 pages left so i might just finish it in the morning since i have a later start tomorrow and i'm still probably wake up around the same time things have been resolved and stuff like nothing too I say nothing too crazy like on, obviously there's been like plot progression i just am indifferent towards it there was like a line in here that i liked so i'm gonna find it it was maggie talking to her sister's boyfriend cj and she was like explaining the situation with her and amanda to him and her and matthew to him and her and danny to him like i guess her whole love situation and he responded look i know how much you want that happy ending but you can't keep looking at the things that made you sad and expect them to make you happy just because they're familiar and you don't know if you're going to get that with anyone else. Isn't it upsetting when you feel something and you're just like, don't call me out. Don't, don't do that. I read that and like thought to a specific moment in my life and I'm like, how dare you do that, CJ? I don't even know you. I don't even know you. The audacity. Um, there was also a moment of when Amanda and Maggie were making up and I've said this somewhere before. I don't know if I've said this in a video or if I'm going to say it in a video or talk about it because I plan to talk about this in depth because I feel this deeply. Um, but there's like not the same amount of no respect. There is not the same amount of energy and thought and like care put into the love that is taking place in a platonic relationship or like compared to a romantic relationship. Like people always seem to value one higher than other or in like when they're talking about the importance of it, they always talk about one versus the other. And I'm just like, anyway, but when Maggie and Amanda were like talking things out, 
I'm gonna only read the first part because that's the only part that's important. Amanda kind of confesses that she was, was feeling really jealous of how close uh, Maggie and Danny had got, and that's part of the reason she thought maybe she had romantic feelings for Maggie because she's like, I've only ever felt that jealous about Jaime. I've never felt that about a friend. So I was like, yo, maybe there's some romantic feelings here. She was asking Maggie if like, does her jealousy make sense? Or is it weird that she still feels jealous about it? And Maggie responded, heteronormativity likes us to think that the only meaningful relationships we can have are romantic. But Amanda, our friendship has always felt just as special as my relationships with Matthew or Trish. I think I was confused because of that too. That's my wrap for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. I feel terrible. I have a migraine. Whatever. Finish this. It was okay. Um, I'd probably give it like a 3.5 out of 5. Um, like it wasn't bad. It wasn't like fantastic. It was, it was good. Especially for like YA romance vibes there. It, it was, it was okay. What I thought of the story, I guess my quick review or uh, just some thoughts as I like got to the end. I have questions about like, I guess the way things were handled, why Maggie did things the way she did, whatever, whatever. Like, she ended up telling everybody about the project and she made the private profile public in case they wanted to look at it and all this stuff. And I'm just like, truthfully, truthfully, and this is just me, other people can disagree, your your own opinions are valid unless, you know, you're being a dick, then your opinion is long not valid. But, like, I think to me, I was like, she's essentially using this as, like, a diary of sorts. She's using her finsta as a diary. In that capacity, you really can't get mad at her. The fact that she's like sharing it with her teacher or not even the fact that she's sharing it with her teacher, I kind of don't care about that part. I guess like the fact that like some of the pictures did include like their physical features, even if it wasn't their whole face, like it was the back of their head or um, the bottom of their face, something like that. Like there was identifying features that you could tell who the student was or like who Maggie was talking about. I'm like, I understand why you'd be upset about that like if maggie just did this as a diary didn't share with anyone you can't get mad at her for that a lot of them felt butthurt that she had like some sort of feelings for all three of them at the same time and i'm like you also can't get mad at her for that like the fact that she's trying to figure out her feelings or work through that you you truly cannot be upset with her that she's confused about her feelings when one Matthew, like I'm just gonna go down the list, Matthew, you two were flirting with her while you had a girlfriend. Like you were giving her just as much as she was giving you. So the fact that she still had some feelings and the fact that y'all had history, you can't get upset with her that she had feelings for this guy. Amanda, you were sending mixed signals and you admitted to the fact that you knew you were sending mixed signals. You can't get mad at her for her, <laughs> for her having a crush on you. And then Danny, it's also fair that she's like, I think I might have feelings for her, but you also don't know this person. So like the fact that she did have feelings for each of these people at varying degrees and had to work through that, I think that's not something you can fault her for. And I think the fact that her friends did find fault in her for that was bullshit. But again, I understand you being mad about like, you took pictures, you ended up having this on the internet. And if the pictures weren't there that you can connect them to what you were talking about, you would have no reason to be mad at that if she was using this as a diary, you know? Anywho, whatever, whatever. You Again, you can disagree with me. I personally don't care if you disagree with me. You, you can do whatever you want, do whatever you want. Um, but yeah, overall, I enjoyed the book. It ended exactly how I thought it was gonna end, which I think is common for like, if you're looking for a YA romance, it's gonna end with a romance. It wasn't a surprise who she was gonna end up with. I think the moral of the story was her more like learning to deal with her feelings and trying to find healthy ways to come up with decision making. Like another big part of it was she always said she wanted to go to NYU and then she realized, oh, it's expensive. Oh, I don't know if I wanna be that far away from my family and being unable to vocalize that to her family because now she felt like they're invested in me going here. Like I have to do it and just kind of being comfortable in her own ability to make decisions for herself. Romance and everything aside, that's really what it came down to, just her believing in her ability to make decisions about her life for herself. Because if she really sat and thought about it logically, she probably would have been like, yeah, Danny is the obvious choice of person, like a healthy relationship I could have with someone. Maybe I should pursue this from the get. Because again, 
video one I called that she was gonna end up with Danny because it's one of the only things that makes sense probably like of the three the only healthy decision that she would have made but yeah she ended up also like not fixing the relationship with her family because it wasn't like strained or anything but also realizing that because she was so caught up in her own internal drama she wasn't being there for her family the way she should have been or needed to be in that moment solid overall story glad i read it i feel like if i was in high school i'd be like girl same like me and maggie are the same person like i too have to struggle and juggle all this stuff like yeah i think it's super duper relatable i enjoy the representation good cute little book would recommend especially if you're like an actual teenager that might be struggling with like the concept of having to decide your future and decision make and making decisions that are actually going to really impact your life for the long run but enjoyed it i'm probably going to start reading this tomorrow um but if i pick up a different book again i warned you don't call me a liar all right see you then good morning happy day 10 remember when i said i was gonna read um women of light haha <laughs> guess what i absolutely did not it said it was a western on goodreads and was not in the mood to read that today we'll try again later um but instead i started the lesbianas guide to catholic school and i am like 50 pages in i'm really enjoying it so far i feel like it just would not be a book about a queer latina in a catholic school if the first thing that happens while she's there is not being basically berated by her racist white classmates which of course is the first thing we get but it was it's good so far like i fuck with her she was like outed at her last school and is no longer friends with her ex-best friend because her ex-best friend is the one that outed her but interested to see how this book keeps going been introduced to a couple of characters at her new school now i'm really fucking with Bo. also i'm kind of hoping that they're the main love interest because and i'm only saying this right now because our main character is lesbian um but Bo is an east asian person and like they're wearing khakis and not the skirt with like rainbow converse so like being a little bit more overt and like the first day in their language arts class i had to do a presentation and she did it about abortion. And I'm just like, I fuck with you. I fuck with you. Um, but it looks like our main character might have crush or attraction to either Bo or this white girl named Jenna, which, um, like, here's the thing. Apparently she's being really nice, but her best friend, one of her best friends, whose name is literally Karen, is really fucking disrespectful and like really, really racist. And the first thing she asks our main character is like, where are you from? Which if you are, of a cultural background you know how annoying that question is and then when they're talking about Bo she literally like slants her eyes and I'm just like no matter how nice you are Jenna if this is your best friend I don't fuck with you like your friends are really a, a reflection of you and if this is who you're hanging around I don't want to be with you so hopefully she deads Jenna soon because I, I don't care about her we'll see how this keeps going Oh, also, also, this is a bit of a side tangent. I'm really, 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 really over identifying a little too closely to these eldest daughters with these moms that are just like, your personality is having to be perfect and then take care of your siblings. It's a little too close to home. It's a little too close to home, but yeah we're liking it so far i'll see you tomorrow good morning it is day 14 and we are 100 pages into this this might be one of my favorite books this year bold assumption we'll see i was literally almost on the verge of tears a couple seconds ago and i was like nah nah no crying no crying for the camera but it's it's really really good there was some more rac racist shit that happened like ugh, fuck those people we don't talk about them they don't they don't get screen time um but there was just this really like sweet and vulnerable moment that happened between um yami and her brother and who the emotions the emotions um there's probably gonna be some fake dating happening which typically i don't care for but i'm interested to see how this goes i'm trying to not say i'm trying to not spoil it i probably will by next time oh well but something else that i'm really liking about like 
50 or so pages I read right now is the relationship that Yami has with her dad. I didn't mention this last time. I don't know if I did. But her dad was stopped by the police and deported back to Mexico. So he hasn't been living there for like eight years. But they basically are maintaining this relationship through a screen. It's going to sound bad. But her dad is like the only person in her family that like outwardly expresses like positivity and affirmations her way her mom is very very traditional catholic latina where it's like she's giving off like my only job in this world is to make sure that my son is taken care of and prospers so he can take care of me in the future and i have this daughter and her only purpose in life is to make sure that my son is taken care of and that he's set up to prosper in the future and it's hard for me to i guess see both of those sides like i think i was raised a lot more americanized so i didn't really have that like really strict catholic latina upbringing but i think there was a lot of the non-emotional non like even though i wasn't raised in a similar manner to how yami and her brother are there's still some things that I'll read and it like it triggers memories if that makes sense but then seeing her relationship with her dad it makes me want for something like that or it's weird to see that that is a reality <laughs> between parent and child is that a weird thing to say take from that what you will but I feel like the relationship the glimpses that we're getting between Yami and her dad are like really positive portrayals that we don't often see in like books or even like in tv shows and stuff of just like latino dad and his daughter like having an emotional connection and being able to communicate and just like talk and shoot the shit and like be playful but still have like serious conversations about things like we still don't really see that and i feel like i don't know if that's not something we see because it's not relatable but I also think it's important because it normalizes that's that that's how parent child relationships in Latin households should be if that makes sense I'm rambling the last note I will make is holy fuck are all these adults homophobic and I will die on the hill that you should not be a parent if you're not willing to accept your children as they are and I mean that in all capacities so If you are a parent watching this and you're homophobic and you would disown your child for being gay or trans or bi or anything like that or being in an interracial relationship, go fuck yourself. You shouldn't be a parent. You shouldn't. Good morning, day 15. Um, About halfway through this, I'm keeping this short. I like it. A lot of stuff is happening. Like, I think it's getting to the point where Yami is, like, trying too hard to be, like, come off as straight. That it's making her more, like, she's overthinking. She's doing too much. She's about to ruin and self-sabotage so much, which is super unfortunate. Um, But I'm kind of living for the drama. Yeah, I'm keeping the short. I'll check in with you tomorrow. Hello, I just finished this. I don't think I have words. I don't think I can put into words how this is just the perfect thing that like I needed right now and how great it actually was. Not sure if I'm just emotional because of hormones or like what, but the way that this book fucked me up like throughout, like what an emotional roller coaster. I'm gonna start with saying five out of five, 100% of five out of five. We'll probably be buying this in the next couple weeks um just to have forever and ever because this is definitely something that i want and has caused so much self-reflection in just a way i didn't anticipate and i think it just caused so much reflection for so many different reasons like it's it's bringing me back to high school and her talking about her high school experience and there's this part at the end where they have like an anti-prom because she finally comes out her and Bo got together at like the icons they are and should be but I don't know if I mentioned this, Bo is Chinese, um, but was adopted by two white parents. Yami is Mexican. And they go to a, a very white school. And there's literally like this line that 
there's at least a hundred people here. I wouldn't be surprised if every single person of color who goes to Slayton is in Bo's house right now. All 23 of us. And I, I don't know if you did not go to like predominantly white school in some capacity as like a person of color or as someone of like a cultural background or some like I don't know if you understand what it is to be in that space like I am I recognize I am light-skinned I I get that that does not stop the racism like holy hell the shit that people would say to me in high school as people that were my friends was wild and I think it's probably gotten better with time but now like this girl is in a catholic institution which i'm not religious so i'm not going to talk about religious people but day two they're already saying some reckless shit to her and i'm like i it's only going down from here and i know it is and so coupling the fact with that these two girls and i'm going to throw caesar in there he comes out as bi eventually we learned that halfway through and i didn't spoil that but so obviously these are all spoilers so of the 23 <laughs> people of color in this school three of them are queer so like you're double compounded right now like consider what that is to the story and how you're already treated in this school and fuck like uh they have their happy ending like thankfully they have their happy ending did we have to go through a ton of emotional turmoil to get there absolutely um if you know my reading preferences and my pre like my reading tastes you know I love some really complex fucked up family dynamics. Did reading this make me realize it's probably because I grew up with a perfectionist complex and even still as a 29 year old adult I have this unnerving fear of disappointing my parents in any capacity and that's probably why I'm so combative when they say things I don't agree with because I want them to be better as people and I don't want that to be a reflection of me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's a lot of um, triggering things that are brought up into conversation in this. Um, for example, there's a part where you realize how bad things are for each of the people in, like for Yami and Caesar. Yami comes out to her dad and he basically just ghosts her, like 100% ghosts her. And their family was supposed to go to Mexico or her mom bought um, her and Caesar tickets to go to Mexico. And at this point, she knows that her dad has been in communication with her mom and her dad has been in communication with Caesar. So it's literally just her that she's not communicating with. And she was like, mm, that's, that's suspicious. He's probably ghosting me, like whatever. So she ends up telling Caesar, like, I told him I'm gay and he hasn't spoken to me. And he, Caesar's like, nah, you're overreacting, overreacting. He comes back from the trip and it was like, nah, you were right about dad, fuck him. And I'm just like, it's wild how someone you can trust so much because her dad was like her ride or die and she came out and he literally was like you're dead to me as a person and we see the same thing happen with Jamal who is Caesar's um, boyfriend or ex-boyfriend they're gonna get together whatever Caesar's working on himself as he should we see the same thing happen with Jamal where he tells his parents that he's gay and they kick him out so he ends up having to stay with Yami's family because his mom's like oh I'm not gonna leave you out on the streets this is also when Yami and Jamal are fake dating so she doesn't know why he got kicked out after he leaves she makes a comment that he was like oh he seems like a little you know homophobic comments be homophobic um but anywho so there's like a lot of different things happening. So as that's happening, Yami already has it in her head. Like if I come out to my parents, they're so religious, they'll probably kick me out. So that happening with Jamal makes that reality so much more real for her that she goes into panic survival mode. And then after her dad finding out and him not talking to her, it almost just strengthens that. And so when Caesar goes to Mexico and talks to her dad, and he's like, I'm not going to tell her mom because I don't want her to be kicked out. It's just kind of like reinforcing all these fears in her head, especially because her and her mom don't have the healthiest relationship as it is. I see myself a lot in Yami. And, oh, uh, and like, it, it sucks to see it. So, like I mentioned, like, Caesar is going through, like, some dark shit, some depressive shit. They have to do confessions at school. And he basically tells a priest, like, bro, I'm bi. 
and the priest tells him to break up with her his boyfriend as like repentance or whatever again i'm not religious i'm not gonna shit on religion i will not let shitty people represent a religion i won't but religion is not for me for multiple reasons anywho basically that happens caesar goes into like a depressive episode that like no one picks up on because yami's over here with like two jobs trying to save money so that if she does come out to her mom or when her mom finds out she can move out and not be like left on the streets if it comes down to that so she's in her own panic stress mode so caesar's kind of on his own and he contemplates taking his own life so he reaches out to jamal and everything kind of gets exposed from there his mom finds out about him and jamal because she went through his phone and yami ends up coming out as well and like so it's all this stuff and everything that yami had done to that point was to protect caesar or for caesar regardless of if caesar had asked her to do anything she felt that pressure from her parents from her mom specifically so like she had to go to this school because caesar was getting in trouble and he needed someone looking out for for her did it end up playing like well into her situation because she didn't want to be at her school anymore because her best friend outed her yeah but it's like all this stuff was happening and compounding so anytime caesar got in trouble it's her fault so every time caesar did something it ended up being her fault so she wasn't home with caesar at the time he told jamal he was contemplating taking his life and had to go to the hospital so her mom's like bro it's your fault why aren't you with him blah 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 and all this shit and i'm just like the additional stress and pressure that's put onto an eldest daughter specifically because the pressures that are put on an eldest children are just different in nature like i think if you're an eldest son there's like this perception that like you need to provide for the family you're like a provider and you're a protector in a sense but if you are an eldest daughter you are an, an additional parent you are not allowed to be emotional or do anything that's not logical because you need to serve and be for the family and that's not something that's talked about a lot i can only speak from my experience so i know that's like that is big in latin culture and that's something that's been ingrained in me since i was young and i don't know if it's something that my parents really ingrained in me or if it's just something i picked up on at some point and that's just what i internalized but that's just the reality of it like it's something that doesn't leave you so even now like i spoke about before like this need for perfection and not disappointing others it's all rooted in that it's because you are meant to serve and be there when called upon for your family and specifically your siblings and specifically any younger male siblings it has its happy ending and i think in reading it i got really emotional i'll just read out this one specific part to you so this is yami's mom talking to her i think caesar was still institutionalized at this point because he had the 72 hours after being like saying i want to take my own life she said i shouldn't have put that on you yamalet what happened to your brother is not your fault i know that i hope you know that i've been unfairly hard on you and i'm sorry for that i need you to know i appreciate everything you've done for us it's more than anyone your age should have on their shoulders i've been so worried about caesar and somehow still miss the signs and look at your hands miha i she she punched glass throughout it's emotions are hard right now just promise me you talk to me before you get to that point i know i haven't made it easy but please talk to me if you need anything okay mia and the mom goes on to be very accepting of both of her kids even though the first reaction is like bro what did i do to deserve this and it's just like bro you're so pressed about religion you're so pressed about religion you are so pressed about religion and for what i'm not gonna shit talk religion because i'm not religious but I will say that there, this book does do a good job of painting like it's okay to have faith in things, but it's also okay to question things within your faith. So there was even that same church scene where priest told Caesar like break up with your boyfriend in that same scene in of time, not necessarily at that point of the book. Bo and the priest get into an argument about how gay marriage is legalized. So why is the church still calling it a sin? And the priest is basically like, just because it's recognized by the law doesn't mean it's recognized by the church. And then they go back and forth, like reciting scripture, basically saying like, there's nothing in the Bible saying that homosexuality is a sin. Because even the mom gets to the point where she's like, I still like have my faith, but anything that tells me I shouldn't love my children is wrong. And I'm just like... <sighs> look at you getting it i think this book hit me so hard because i'm just like this is such an idealized outcome of 
very real, very bad situations. We already had one person get kicked out of their house. So obviously I don't think they were going to get kicked out of their house. But I think it's still like specifically in like Catholic Latin households. I still to this day don't think that this is the reaction that would have happened. I think there's some realism to it in that like I think the world is developing or the country or people in general are being more okay with questioning their faith and why things are the way they are and you know calling out the bullshit that they don't agree with but I think in, there's still just so many people that are just so traditional that I don't think that this would be I don't know if this is a majority outcome you know and I think sitting with that makes it really really hard because like I think about when I have children and how I want to raise them and that's something that my husband and I have talked about that like that's a conversation that we're gonna have with like our parents and people that we care about that we're gonna love our children unconditionally and if you can't commit to that before we have kids or before this child is brought to earth that you will also love this child unconditionally you just won't be in their lives but yeah much much to reflect on very very good book and i'm i'm really glad i just i finished it today but yeah i'll 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 i'll, I'll see you tomorrow with the next book morning um today we finally started women of light enjoying it so far um really we're just getting an introduction to the family and it's like a multi-generational story so the prologue was all about like the first generation person um and then the story really follows like the fourth generation of people but like you get a little bit of the story throughout so it's still just really introduction of the characters at this point but the characters are really interesting i think i finally realized why i tend not to lean towards historical fiction and that is because there's usually just so much racism in hate crimes <laughs> just so much and it's not funny but like i'm five chapters in and like each chapter there's just been something that's just like this is racist this is racist this is racist that's a hate crime which is racist <sighs> i'm really glad i had some lighter books to read for the morning and i'm like i don't know if i made the right decision having this be my morning read but we'll we'll see how it goes i'll check back in with you good morning you probably hear a lot of sounds outside of not only nature but power washing of the nearby buildings so i apologize for that i read like another 20-ish pages of this um it wasn't like a super heavy reading day for me this morning just because i have some stuff going on i've i have work to do today so um i just didn't have a ton of time my goal is to finish this by saturday so that when i finish my 21 days of reading outside like I can go over all the completed books that I've read um, just because I feel like it's gonna be really awkward to stop halfway in the middle of one and that is wholly a me problem and I recognize that but yeah good so far um, just finished up part one we're getting a more in-depth look into Luz and Diego's past he's healing from the assault that he went through and was recently told he had to leave by his aunt and um he got insight into like their childhood and when their dad left them that's that's that i'll see you tomorrow good morning uh the the birds say good morning also finishing up or i just finished reading for today no like real thoughts it's it's going okay again it's still like historical fiction which is not like my favoriteest thing but it's good i really really like the writing even if like the story itself isn't something that I would typically gravitate towards still pretty interested in the ride it is like a multi-generational story so you'll like when the book started you heard from like the first generation from the lost territory which is like the sleepy prophet and then she found a baby and then we hear from his perspective a lot his name is Pidre we hear a lot from his perspective and then we hear a lot from the fourth generation which is Luz and then um her cousin Lucette her brother had to move away but he was also like oh in the first part a lot but there was one part that I liked a lot because it's still super duper duper duper, duper topical and it is when 
Pidre went to Jack Wesley's Wild West show. There was an Indian War battle uh, reenactment and uh, most of the people that were going to the circus were white people or Anglos. So he had said, it was in that moment that Pidre realized he had entered the strange world of Anglo myth. Characters resurrected from the language of story, populating the realm of the living side by side, if only for one night and one night only. Pidre came from storytelling people, but as he passed the big top devoted to the reenactment of Custer's last stand, he couldn't help but think that Anglos were perhaps the most dangerous storytellers of all, for they believed only their own words and they allowed their stories to trample the truths of nearly every other man on earth. So topical. Read that and I was like, yep, 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 yep. Like that one right there. But yeah, I'll catch you tomorrow. It's day 20. What is time? Where did that go? If you would have told me I actually would have done this for 20 days and like been consistent, I would have been like, seems fake, but proud of me. Halfway through this, it's a hard read. I mentioned this before that like I've come to terms with the fact that usually I don't like historical fiction and I, I've never been into westerns, but like a historical fiction western book like it's hard to get through because it's just so violent and like the first quarter of the book you have diego being brutalized by three men and we end up finding out why that happened halfway through the book luce is now working for this man named david who is an attorney and he's like his whole thing is like being for the people and he's working on a case for a man that was killed by a police officer. There's mention of like the KKK dressing up as police officers and like killing people and you know doing what they do. It's beautiful writing but it's it's draining to get through um, and it's a hard read for the first thing in the morning. I think had I fully understood what the book was going to be about i probably would not have chosen this as the last book to read for this little challenge i think this is something i would have much rather kind of read and take it take wow um i would have read and taken my time with just because it's it's just a lot on the soul yeah my brain isn't burning right now but um i'm probably just gonna finish this tomorrow i'll give you my final thoughts then I had every intention of finishing this today, but ooh, it would not have been good for me mentally. This is being recorded the week that um, the Supreme Court basically said the police don't need to read your Miranda rights to you and there's continues to be absolutely no accountability for, for the police, which who's surprised I'm not. Um, it's also the same week that they enforced basically less strict gun laws and literally yesterday they overturned Roe versus Wade and it's just gonna keep going and I think it's just mentally fucking me up that I'm reading this and this feels like it's happening today and the only thing that's changed is like locations and some of the language so I hate it here I really do. People always look at me crazy when I said I can't wait to leave this country because I'm leaving this country. I refuse to be here. And honestly, I, I don't care who sees this. I'm very open about it. The US is a fucking joke. It has always only sold a dream. And I don't even want to talk today, actually. Yeah, that's the end. Goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow. So I finished this. I think I would have liked this book a lot more at a different point in my life, if that makes sense. Like, I mentioned in the last clip or the last couple clips I was reading this and that is when the Supreme Court was making all these super fucked up decisions and I guess it was just it was like jarring and heartbreaking and it was mentally fucking me up to read this while everything was happening seeing the same things happening in this book if that makes sense like the majority of the timelines or the perspectives we were reading from were like let me get dates because I never actually look like dates. The majority of them were like from the like the late 1880s um, to the early 1930s. So there's like this 50 year time span that we're reading about this. And I realized why I don't particularly pick up 
um, historical fiction, specifically historical fiction that takes place in the United States. It's because it reminds me how much hasn't changed. Like things have become more modern, but the racism is the same. The abuse is still the same. The colonization is still the same. The fucked up government is still the same. The white saviors are still the same. Like a lot of it is still the same today. Oh, I like, I don't like being reminded of that, I guess. Like, I know it's the truth. I know that's where we function. But like I mentioned in another video that I read for escapism and to like get insight on other people's lives. And yeah, like I'm getting insight on these people's lives and it's another multi-generational story, which in this book I didn't mind as much, but I don't know, it was it, it was a good book. Like I think I ended up giving it like a 3.5 or like a 3.75, like it's a good book and I know it's a good book. I just don't think I was in the best headspace to read it. Like in the first like, 50 pages you, you have like the main character's brother being like brutalized by a group of white men and you find out why that happened later on and i'm just like this shit still happens <laughs> like i'm sure if you actually looked it up it happened literally today or you have botched abortions happening and you have people that are forced to give birth you have like these well-established privileged white men who say they're for the people and trying to fight for the people, but they're actually just abusing their space and their privilege to take advantage of, you know, the brown girls that live around them because they can and they're not gonna face any consequences. And yeah, there's, it was just a little too much for me right now, I think. I think the part that messed me up the most is that like a lot of it wasn't, parts of it were kind of graphic, but other parts weren't necessarily super graphic, but you can just imagine the space and you can just imagine what was happening and I guess the things that were left unsaid. And yeah, good book, not a good time in my life to pick it up. So I'll own that. All right. So that was 21 days of reading. In that span of time, I read through 16 books. 13 of them are manga, manga still books. Um, but I read through 16 books, not in this order. These were flipped. Had some really great reading experiences. Um, really enjoyed Owl Hotter Ride and The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School. And then I read two books that I found were just okay or maybe just not the best times for me to be reading them so what did we learn what did we gain let's let's wrap this bad boy up i think i said this in a couple clips but this wasn't necessarily supposed to be like wake up first thing in the morning gonna read like in the first clip i had right outside after like a, a walk i did um so that was sometime in the afternoon but because of the way like my schedule ended up being a few days after that, I ended up reading first thing in the morning as soon as I woke up. I think once it ended up shifting to read as soon as I wake up to start my day, that's kind of when I found it to be the most beneficial. The thought, like the thought process was I'm going to be out in the sun and soaking up all the rays. It's the summer and it is hot as fuck. Past couple weeks, it was like a high of 98. That sun was unforgiving. I wasn't doing that. I got sunburned in that first clip. And I still have the really messed up tan lines on my legs to prove it. So I think shifting from that and making it like part of my morning routine or the thing that I start my day with really impacted me mentally in a way that I didn't, not in a way I didn't expect. Like literally, I'm pretty sure there's research that proves like being outside for an extended part of your day and like being part of nature and being disconnected is really good for your mental health. And like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's true okay like you're right what do you want a cookie it's true and i love it and i've continued doing it i finished the 21 days and i still am reading every morning i say i'm still reading every morning it's literally been two days since the experiment ended but i finished the your name manga series and i'm going to new york for a couple days and i'm bringing books with me and i'm still probably gonna read the first thing in the morning and just sit outside for like an hour and just use that as a time for myself. It was a great experience. I'm glad I did it. it. Pushed me to just concentrate on that time for myself and like really reflect and be on my own and be comfortable being on my own and almost like reaffirming that 
it's okay for me to be on my own, which sound like things that are obvious, but actually being in the experience was really different. Like I was outside and I could just hear like birds chirping and I'm just like, wow, this is kind of magical. This is, this feels nice. It's been great. I'm glad I did it. 10 out of 10 experience. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you enjoyed the long tangents I ended up going on in the middle of the, the series. Like I know I had a hardcore rant during just your local bisexual disaster. And at this point of me recording, I don't remember what I said, but I stand by every word. I stand by every word. Um, but thank you so much for watching. And to wrap up this video for today, I just want to ask you all, hey, so what, what do you think about this? So I fairly often talk to my husband about this. And we've agreed that if we could be any character in like a show, in an anime, in a movie, we would specifically not want to be two people. One is the main character because the amount of stuff that happens to main characters specifically in like anime, too much, way too much to deal with. Like, don't want that stress in my life. I just, I wanna chill. The second one is a main character's parent. And I think this was mainly inspired by anime and manga, because if you know anything about a main character, you know that they don't have both of their parents or any parents. You know that more than likely, specifically in like a shonen, something bad is gonna happen to whatever parents they have remaining. And I'm not trying to go out like that, you know? If I could be any character in a show, I would be the side character. I would just like, maybe, maybe like not even like the main character's best friend. I'd be like just someone in the friend group. I'd be like that floater friend because you know what? That floater friend just vibes. Nothing bad really happens to them because they're not significant enough to the plot that something occurs, but they're always kind of there for, for the, the drama and they always know what's going on. Like, I think that's the best place to be. That's the safest place to be. For like life longevity, fantastic place to be. I don't need to be the center of attention. I don't need the bad guys coming after me. I don't need to be the main attraction in life. I don't need to be the one that's defending the school in a sports tournament or something. I don't want that. I don't need it. I don't need it. At this point in my life, I just want to vibe. I just want to chill. I don't want main character energy. I don't want parent of main character energy. Like right now we're watching Miss Marvel and as a main character, I'd be stressed. As a main character's best friends, I'd be stressed. As a main character's parents, I'd be stressed. Maybe I'd be a main character's sibling, perhaps. I feel like a main character's sibling kind of lives in the same area as like someone in the friend group, but not the best friend. And I think those are two safe places to kind of float, you know? I think I would be one of those two people. I wouldn't be the teacher, like something bad always happens to the teacher or they're evil. And I don't wanna do that either. If it was up to me, I would be main character sibling or floater in the friend group. And I stand by that. Who would you be? Who do you wanna be in the show? Let me know in the comments down below. If you decide you're gonna start your morning with reading outside with a nice cup of tea or at least some water or something to keep you hydrated, let me know how it goes in the comments down below. My new mission in life is to try to get as many people just reading outside because it just feels so nice. And I want everyone to feel the euphoria and the endorphins and the serotonin that I did. Um, but thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click like. If there's other like habit forming videos you'd like to see me partake in, go ahead and comment that down below as well. Um, but that is it for today's video. I'll see you next time. Bye. I'll think of something else to do at the end. That's that's annoying to me. I don't know how that hits your ears. I am so sorry. Bye. Sky, hope there's more than just dreams. I hope there's more to the eye instead of things I didn't see. I just want something.